chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Gasol, um, but we're going to do some more en engagement, uh, engaging with everybody. So, um, without further ado, I'll go ahead and let uh, Zoe introduce the night. Okay. <clears throat> Woo! Thank you, Zoe. Ah! I just wanted to um, thank everyone for coming out. Um, I know that the screening ran late, and we're here late, but, you know, um, I actually wanted to just give Kusal a proper introduction. Um, Kusal and I actually grew up together on a little street called Mini and Bishop. Yeah, it's good. Can you hear us, Kusal? Yes, I can hear you. All right, cool. Um, so, some of you actually are from that uh, neighborhood. Anybody from Santa Ana? Clap. No. no. I know Mini Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I you know Mini Street. Um, so that street was actually uh, a pretty tough neighborhood to live in. And um, I know that um, some of us, you know, we took different paths. And um, it, it's just amazing how life can bring you um, forward. And um, I'm just really grateful to know Kothal as a friend. And also, I'm really grateful that we have tonight to share this time with him. Um, you'll probably uh, have a chance, you know, to go one on one as well. But um, we'll have a chance also to discuss the film. I'm going to ask. <laughs> That's Kaylee, by the way. She's a director, and she wants a picture of my back. I guess. <laughs> That's five dollars to the donation box. Um, but thank you so much, everyone, for coming. And um, in a few moments, we'll have a facilitator come up. And, uh, oh, well, actually, a, a, a key speaker. OK. We will have something happening tonight. I guess I don't know what's happening. Zoe, the Asian Pacific Film Festival. And we would like to thank the Asian Pacific Film Festival for also screening the movie. Let's give them a moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the support. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, you know, it's, it's it's funny. We we actually put this uh, after party together within I I think about six days. Um, <laughs> you know, six days. We we put it together. Um, I got with Casal, got with Remy, and we pretty much wanted to find a way to. Uh, find a way to get funds to Gasol because as you know as, as a poet as an artist um, you know it's, it's you're a struggling artist at that you know um, you don't get revenue right away you have to build your name um, such as what Gasol is doing now um, and teaming up with a uh, studio revolt has, has pushed him out there and now you guys get to share not only the movie with him but the story and what he's going through um, and yeah, just like every day, you know, he's, he's a struggling poet and I wanted to make or have everybody be aware of that, that yeah, he got a movie out right now, but this is just a start for him. He's still waking up in his apartment, still struggling to get by every day, you know, eating, um, you know, just living the lifestyle, uh, I say again, a struggling poet. So I want everybody to give a big round of applause for coming out tonight and supporting this uh, after party. We're going to go ahead and, and let Gasol um, introduce himself and tell him, uh, have him tell everybody here how he feels about the movie and about everybody just coming out tonight as a whole. Um, for the man, the feature, the myth, Gasol. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, for showing up, for showing love, and all the support has been an amazing 
Um, wow, words can't even express, like, serious. You know, I'm supposed to be a poet, but it, so much love and so much support from so many people from so many walks of life and different paths. You know, a lot of people I've managed to connect with um, um, doing time. And for me, um, having these guys that I've done time with and, you know, just having them come out and see what is and what's happening and, and what's going on. It is just an amazing thing to, to behold because it, it says that, that we can change, we can make a difference. Um, Cambodian something, wow. You know, I really didn't have too much expectations on, on anything when this all started. I wanted to just get the story heard. I wanted to 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 let America know and say, hey, you know, our stories aren't pretty, our stories aren't nice, but it's relevant, it's here, we exist. And in that aspect, I didn't want us, I didn't want those that been casted out, those that's been exiled, those that's been returned or deported to be forgotten, to to say that they have no more, they have, they don't want to have pay a role in American society when in fact we do. You know, now we're we're building bridges not just here in Cambodia, but here in the States and as well globally. You know, immigration is such a huge topic. It's a monster, it's a, it's a beast of a monster. And to me, um, what motivates me? What motivates me? Let me tell you a story, okay? I have a friend. He did time, he did five years when he was younger. He got out after those five years, rehabilitated himself. Reformed himself, he got a job, you know, bought a house, got married, had three beautiful kids, 13 years clean, 13 years clean, right? On his daughter's first day of school, takes her to school, tell her, hey, I'll be back, pick you up when after school. He goes home, ice officers around his house. Yeah. So hey, come out, or we come in and we shoot your dogs and we take you. So he comes out, they handcuff him, detain him, deported them. He was a father, he was a husband, he was a provider. He broke up a family for no apparent reason. And so when I when I think about Cambodian son, when I think about what this what this documentary means. It's so much more, you know, and hopefully, hopefully it can be a tool to to affect change, to bring reunite family. Because you know what, no society can be deemed civilized without the right to family. Uh, so I, you know, as far as what's going on out there now, I, I just hope that that this story does get reached out to our young community as well. Uh, and as far as even in Long Beach, you know, you think about Long Beach, you think about the, the, the history of Long Beach, you know, late 80s, early 90s, the fluctuation of Cambodian immigrants, Asian immigrants, period, you know, Southeast Asian immigrants coming into the States and in, in mass amounts. Uh, I definitely don't want to forget those that, that gave up their lives um, within the assimilation of American culture. Long Beach, Cambodian town. I, you know, definitely, definitely don't want to forget those that all my young brothers and sisters that got caught up in the gang violence and drugs and all that culture. You know, it, you can't sweep it under the rug anymore. I don't want to sweep it under the rug no more. It's part of the culture, it's part of the society, and we have to accept it and we have to change that perception of what that culture means. You know, gangs, when you have gangs, you have like, for instance, I don't know, maybe I'm running off tangent here and I'm just keeping going. I'm sorry if I'm running off tangent, but I wanted to change the perception of gangs because gang culture, how do you combat gang culture? Do you just annihilate everyone? Do you just lock everyone up? Is that the way to combat gang culture? And to me, I don't think so, because you know what, you have fraternities, you have secret societies, right? You have all these uh, so-called groups that are basically like gangs, 
when Art Singer gang. So to me, how to combat gang culture is to change the perception. You know, how you represent it. Yeah, I'm from a gang, but you know what? This is what I do. This is what I do to my community. This is what I do for my community. Um, so with that said, our, our promoter and son, thank you. You know, I thank, thank you to all the organizers, Zoe, um, Tony T for organizing this, for LA Film Fest, Pacific Film Fest, for all you guys out there from the ground up. Um, again, uh, love and respect. You know, um, just recently a homie out here, Exile, um, just recently passed away. Um, rest of peace, tweeting. Um, if any of you guys know him, um, um, he was reported back out here in 2002 and just recently found in one of the hospitals laying cold on the floor. You know, just left there. So, you know, um, in the rock community out here, we're, we're, we're dealing with that. We're, information are still trickling in. Um, but again, this is what's going on. This is what this is like. And as it continues to move forward, I hope this movie continues to um, catch momentum, catch fire from, from all you people out there because you know what? It's all about word of mouth. And, and I am so much appreciative for the love and for the everything, man. I see all you beautiful people out there, my boy, Poe. Man, I love you, brother, man. Seriously, we, we were so young back in the day. And uh, <laughs> at one point in time, we were both looking at life. Right? You remember when they came at me with the deal and I told the pro, I was like, man, what's up? You, know, you want me to take this? You know, the first deal that came, they was like, nah, I don't take that, man. That, that ain't no deal. And I told you, I'm like, man, look, man, we can ride until the wheels fall off, man. You know, ride until the wheels fall off. And when they came in with that 16 years, and you told me to take it, that, <laughs> 